Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tyler Franklin, and I am in Texas right now. Um, currently, this is where I live. So, howdy. My assignment this semester has been over William Law's book, A Serious Call to a Devout and Holy Life. So, I'm going to start this off um, by starting with his biography. Law was born in Kingscliff, England, and in 1705, he spent time doing studies at, in college at Cambridge. He then became a teacher and worked teaching and working in the church. Law was the son of a very prosperous and wealthy businessman. So from the start, Law was promised a great education. And then when Queen Anne died without an heir, King George I came to the English throne. Law then refused to swear an oath of allegiance to King George. And then he became a non-juror. So he was forced to give up his fellowship, and he was denied further advancement within the academic um, field or in, within the church. So for many years later, Law served as a tutor for Mr. Edward Gibbons, and he served the Gibbon family um, by being their guidance counselor and meeting their spiritual needs, as well as others who would come visit him to hear his teachings. The household then broke up in 1737. Law then left in 1740, to return to Kingscliff to live in his father's estate and his house because his father has passed away. Then Law was joined by two ladies, Mrs. Hutchison, who was a widow, and Miss Hester Gibbon, who was the sister of Edward Gibbon. The three spent 21 years living a life wholly devoted and wholly spent to a devotion to the Lord. And Law spent the rest of his life um, in solitude and in singleness and, and, and spent time writing with these two women. Law then died in April 1761. Law's writings covered a, a couple fields of areas. Um, and one of his area of writings, it, it dealt with controversial writings or issues at the time. He had also um, writings covering, you know, divinity or theological issues as well. And we see the serious call to devout and holy life and also a treatise of Christian perfection. Um, these two books deeply impacted and inspired many people of that time. Um, from, from Mr. Samuel Johnson, the Gibbon family, and even bishops. Law's book was published at the beginning of the 18th century Enlightenment period. This is a time when rationalism and reason has grown and it reached its peak. Law's writings were aimed at lukewarm Christians and helped encourage readers to live out a renewed life of holiness. Some of his writings were responses to other people's published works, um, but most of his works were in the area of Christian spirituality, which he refused. Um, he, he refused the... the idea of an average Christian life and wanted to challenge people to live devote and holy um, to what is taught in, in scripture. Responding to the challenge that um, the Enlightenment period faced um, or opposed the church by you know reason or rationalism, um, law created an argument, um, a devout and holy life. And he defined a devout and holy life by it evolving um, everything in a person. And not just part partially living for the Lord, but it takes all of someone's being um, to be devoted in every aspect of life um, and to refute any selfish desires um, that rationalism was sparking within a lot of the people at the time. Law used fictional characters throughout his book to explain points and help, um, I guess, help shine light on the points that um, Law is trying to make. So to give an example, Law would write about or make up a fictional character of a believer and a non-believer, and he would compare and contrast um, the two lifestyles. And while he was comparing and contrasting these lives, um, he would you know, write about prayer, write about how one person was devoted and the other wasn't. And he would use um, these characters to dr help drive his points home to help us readers understand um, what Law is trying to teach us. Um, a, few, a few other things that Law wrote about in his book. 
was how there is nothing we can do in life that will please God if we as Christians do not incorporate holy devotion. Law even equals the playing field for both men and women and, ha and shows how we are both ob obligated to devote ourselves to God. Law even states this, quote, There is nothing more to be dreaded than the neglect of our Christian calling, the purpose of which is not to serve the worldly desires of a short life, but to redeem people and souls unto God, to fill heaven with saints, and to complete a kingdom of eternal glory unto God. And that is found in chapter 10. In the later half of the book, Law writes about how we are to love others as Christ has first loved us. And therefore, we should be in intercession for those we love. Law finishes, he finishes his book by explaining the importance of repentance and how that brings a renewal and, and, define, and it refines our relationship with our Lord. And to summarize um, a little bit more of the themes that Law writes about, um, he explains how Christian devotion involves a type of dedication. Um, not a partial dedication, um, but it a dedication um, that, that takes all of us, all of our aspects in our life, from our job, from our career, from our friends, our relationships, our thoughts, our prayer life, how it should all be devoted um, to the Lord. And he, he, law is very radical, and he could sound legalistic in a sense, um, but his points that he drives are, uh, they're great. Um, he then explains how, you know, uh, practicing a religious daily life is kind of like exercising, um, kind of like working out. You have to uh, break down a muscle when you're lifting weights. You have to break it down and exercise it and work it out daily um, to build that muscle, build it stronger, uh, and to see results. And, he ex and he, in this book, he explains how devotion is like exercising and how we need to practice um, religious um, actions every day. And he uses an example of praying. How praying um, is an exercise, but it is partial exercise because if someone spends time in prayers but his daily actions or his lifestyle does not reflect of that what he prays for then his prayers are meaningless so he makes comparison and he makes a point that our actions and our daily lifestyle should reflect what we are praying for and it should reflect um, how we act on Sunday mornings um, so I definitely believe law loves the book of James um, and how faith without works is dead. The law makes that point, and that theme is hidden and, and threaded into the pages of his book. A couple things I had trouble with while reading um, was that at times I found it hard to follow um, William. Um, I found it hard to follow his points and his examples when he was trying to uh, explain um, about um, um, a, a living life. Um, when he was making a point, he would sometimes randomly put in fictional characters right in the middle of his point. So it would kind of throw me off um, because we would go straight into a narrative story about two different people. But I had to continue reading and continue being patient. So the next couple pages after his narrative, um, it would explain his, his, his point that he was he started off with. So he would all relate it and tie it back to the beginning point. So I had to be patient and I had to reread a few pages to understand the full meaning of William Law's teaching. This is one of the greatest devotional books of the Christian faith. It has inspired thousands to walk closer with the Lord and to grow in sanctification. John Wesley is just one example um, who was a close associate with Mr. Law. And John Wesley was impacted and inspired greatly by Law's writings. I have spent some time reading um, online people's opinion reviews about this book. And there are good and bad reviews, of course, for everything. But the majority of people um, wrote about how this has impacted and changed their lives. Um, how it has impacted their daily living. Um, so a lot of good things have come from this book. And for me, even... I was challenged and convicted um, from page one while doing my readings. Um, and it's pretty neat and pretty cool how reading this book and comparing it to my daily lifestyle and 
And I'm like, whoa, I'm doing some things wrong with my lifestyle, and I, I, I can change it. And from reading online reviews, a majority of people have experienced the same thing while applying the principle, the principles that law teaches to their life. So definitely a good read. This book has um, challenged many Christians throughout throughout the ages, um, and it's definitely a classic. So check it out if you have time. Thank you all so much for watching my video, um, and I hope you all have a great semester. So see you all later.